Did you know the first record for a 10K was in the Bible? How far was Jerusalem from Emmaus? It says in your reading, about seven miles. Well, a 10K is about seven miles. And they walked it when they went. But that very hour they returned, which we could interpret to mean that they made it from Emmaus to Jerusalem in an hour. No, I do the bell in almost every year and I'm standing there waiting, right? I'm always in the back crowd because I'm not very fast. So I got extra counterbalance that keeps me from going really fast. So I'm in that last corral and they always announce even before we get to the starting line, my family will, will concur with this, that people have finished or are very close to finishing, right? We haven't even started yet. And there's someone who's already finished. So you could do a 10K pretty quickly if you knew how to, if you were a really good runner, right? About 30 minutes or less. Some of those guys from that do the Boston Marathon run it a lot quicker than that. But I digress. What is this story really about? Is it about two men that run a very long distance in a, in a short period of time? Is it about an appearance of Jesus? Or is it about something more and grander that can give us hope today? I think it's a little bit of all of that. But to start with, what day is this? It's Easter again. We're st- we still haven't left Easter. This is still the day that Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and was expecting to find a rock covering the, the tomb and Jesus to be dead. But she found Him alive. And that very day, two disciples went for a walk. They went for a walk down from Jerusalem to Emmaus, which is about seven miles, going east to west. They were headed towards the sea. And they were walking And they were discussing what was happening. And Jesus came along. Right? And what does the reading say? Well, excuse you. The reading says, While they were walking, a stranger came up and asked, What are you discussing while you walk along? Right? And even before that, it says, Jesus Himself came near and went with them. In verse 16, what does verse 16 say? I'm always, I'm always amazed by this reading for that very verse alone. Verse 16. Anybody? You got it in your... But their eyes were kept from seeing Him. Right? Recognizing Him. They didn't know who He was seeing Him and recognizing Him, right? You see, sometimes you see people and you think, I should know who this person is. It happens more as you get older, right? <laughs> I should really know who this person is. I kind of know who they are, but I'm not sure. But Jesus walked up alongside of them and and they didn't know who he was. And he asked them, what are you talking about? And they said, you know, are you the only one that doesn't know everything that's happened in Jerusalem these past days? And in normal Jesus fashion, he twists it back on them and he asks them a question. What things? What things happened these past few days in Jerusalem? What is it that you're worried about? What is it that you're fearful for? What is it that you hope for? Right? Because that's what Cleopas says. Right? Cleopas breaks down exactly what they had been talking about. And then he says... But we had hoped that He was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped that He was the one to redeem Israel. To set us free from the bondage that we're in. To set us free from what is happening around us. We had hoped. Right? Hope is a big word. My question for you this morning is, what are you hoping for? I'd hoped 
that the first two daughters that were miscarried by my wife would not have been. I hope that I will be a better father than I have been. I hope that the world will not go the way that it seems that it is. I hope that that job would have been a better one. I hoped What do you hope? You see, and I've always wondered until now why those disciples were not able to know who Jesus was. Why didn't they know who he was when he walked up to him? Because it wasn't just the 12 that followed Jesus around for three years. It was the 12 that Jesus chose. But then there were others that came along with them. So Cleopas and his companion could have been somebody that walked with Jesus for years. And how is it that they didn't know who he was? It's not like it was a long time ago. I mean, Jesus just died three days ago now. How is it that they didn't know him? But Jesus joins them as they're walking. They're concerned over what happened. They had hoped that Jesus was going to be the Messiah, the one to set them free, the one to give them what they needed. They had hoped and understood the way that they needed God to be in their lives. And how many of us do that every day? God, if you'll only do this, then everything will be perfect. But it's not about how we want God to act. It's about how God is going to act and how God lives in and through our lives. Jesus joined Cleopas and his walking companion and starting with Moses and all of the prophets, which means what? What does that mean? There's a little bit of, of a hint there in your reading if you want to look. It says, Jesus, starting with Moses and all of the prophets, unpacked for them what? All of the scriptures, which is what? Remember, I'm old and half deaf. I heard somebody say something, but I don't know what. What is all of the scriptures to Jesus? The Old Testament. Right? We look at the first half of this book as being the Old Testament. In Jesus' day, this part of the book was the scriptures. The whole sum of the scriptures. And Jesus, starting with Moses, meaning what? The Pentateuch, the very beginning of the Old Testament, and through all of the prophets, unpacked for these two how God had spoken through all of this word up until this point, and all of the things that had to happen to the Messiah, and all the things that God was going to do through the Messiah. Not what His people wanted, but what God was going to do through His people. And Jesus unpacked for them that very thing and walked with them in their despair, in their fear, in their hope that had been shattered because God wasn't who they thought he should be. And Jesus joined them on that journey and he walked with them and he talked with them. He journeyed with them in their despair. And that right there, my friends, is the hope for this morning. Because every one of us have something that we hope for. These two hope that she will grow up to be a wonderful child, to be... A Nobel Prize physicist, maybe. The best child ever and never get into trouble. <laughs> exactly. It's not going to happen. <laughs> the best children in the world still cause issues. <laughs> we all have a hope. And here is your guarantee this morning that Jesus, whether you recognize him or not, is walking with you on your journey. Jesus is there holding your hand and unpacking for you everything that's ever happened and telling you where God was at in all of it. If you'll just take a moment and listen. And that's what God is calling each and every one of us to do is to listen to our neighbor, to listen to our pew mate. 
to listen to those around us and to hear what they're saying and not to try to jump in and fix their problems, right? Because if Cleopas and his friend had recognized Jesus, what would they want him to do? Go back and be the way that they expected God to be. But God had to come to them in a way so they would understand who God was and they would let go of their expectations. Because it's about us encountering God on a journey. The journey you're already on because He's joining you there on it with you. So everything that you hope for can come true. As long as you remember that Jesus is walking with you. And then when Jesus sat down at the table, what did He do? He took bread, He blessed it, and He broke it. And He gave it to them. And at that moment, they knew who He was. Because this is the place where we truly encounter the risen Christ. At this table. In the breaking of the bread. Because that's where he told us he would be. He meets Harper and all of us this morning at that font. And names us and claims us as his own. Pulls us into a relationship with him. And promises there that he'll always walk with us on that journey. And every day we see him in this meal. And he comes to us new and fresh. And gives us the grace that we need. Because that's what God always promised that he's going to do, to walk with us, to journey with us, to be with us in our need, to show us that our hopes can be real. So remember, just like Cleopas and his companion, get ready to run a race because God is with you. And when you see him, he's going to set your lives on fire and set you running to tell all the world about how much He loves you and how much He loves them. Because that's where He's sending each of us to go. Out into the world to share His love with everyone. And remembering that He is always there walking with us on that journey.